have you ever taken a moment to explore a beetle up close? If you take a stroll outside, there is a good chance you will encounter a beetle. Whether you focus on flowers, which are often visited by beetles who play a major role in plant pollination, or maybe you find beetles hiding amongst plant leaves. When you look under your feet as you're walking, you might catch sight of a darkling beetle crossing your path. Some beetles can even be found in water, such as these predaceous diving beetles swiftly moving along the bed of a stream. Most of you probably don't want to hear this, but you often don't even have to leave your house to find a beetle. Drugstore beetles and carpet beetles are two very common species found in homes, feeding on everything from paper through clothing to packaged food. The bottom line is, there are a lot of beetles out there. And once you start looking for them, you might be surprised how many different species you can find around you. And it's not a coincidence. If we take all the animal species in the world, almost 70% of them are insects. And around 40% of insects are beetles. That's about 25% of all animals. There are currently over 400,000 species of beetles. But this is just an estimate, as new species are being described quite frequently and we don't really know how many species are still waiting to be discovered. To give you a comparison, there is about the same amount of described beetle species as there is of all described plants, actually even more. And remember, we're talking only about beetles, not all insects. Today, I want to get you familiar with beetle body parts, because we cannot talk about beetles without knowing the correct terms to describe what we're seeing. I have three specimens of Prionis californicus here, two with closed wings, male and female, and one with open wings, this one is male as well. And since this species is so large, it will serve us well for seeing all the important characters. Actually, probably more than half of all beetle species are smaller than 5 mm, so you might struggle a bit to learn beetle morphology on typical examples such as this one. So let's focus on our Prionis, commonly known as the California root borer. People often confuse this beetle with a cockroach, which is not a beetle and belongs to a different order of insects. If you've ever touched a beetle before, you probably noticed its body is hard and shell-like. That's because the exoskeleton is thick and sclerotized, more so than in other insects. And as the name suggests, it acts as the external skeleton, providing support and protection for beetles' otherwise soft bodies. You can see it best on the most noticeable part of the beetle body, the elytra, which are modified forewings. One elytron, the second elytron, meeting in the middle in a straight line, which is topped with this small triangle called a scutellum. The elytra are usually hard and rigid all the way to the tip. They're actually so durable that many species, especially those with attractively colored iridescent elytra, have been used in art or even incorporated into clothing. The elytra cover and protect the membranous hind wings underneath, which are the wings that beetles use for flying. You don't get to see these transparent wings that often, unless, obviously, you spot a beetle in flight. Luckily, I can show you the wings on this specimen, since the wings were spread out during preparation. By seeing the wings open up like this, you can really appreciate how protective the elytra are, since without them, the beetle's soft abdomen is revealed and the beetle looks naked. In most beetles, the elytra cover the whole abdomen, even though there are some beetles in which the elytra are shortened, or very rarely completely missing. But there is this little part of the abdomen peeking out. It is the last segment and we call it a pygidium. It hides the reproductive organs and in this female specimen we can actually see the ovipositor peeking out. The ovipositor is a tube-like organ used for laying eggs and as it is an internal organ you don't usually get to see it. To see more of the abdomen, not just the last segment, we need to flip the beetle over. By looking at its body from underneath or even from the side, we can clearly see the abdomen is segmented. 
Each segment has two main plates, the sternite, that's what we see looking at the beetle from the bottom, and turgide, which we can see when the wings are spread. I should probably mention that we call the upper side dorsal and the bottom side ventral. Okay, so looking at the abdominal segments dorsally on the specimen with open wings, we see more segments than when we flip the beetle ventrally. That's because ventrally some of the segments are concealed. And here we would call the visible parts of the segments turgides. Okay, so turgides and sternides. This part is a little tricky, I know, but I hope it makes sense. We can also find these structures on the sides of each turgide. I took a photo under the microscope so you can see these structures enlarged. They look a bit like plants tomata, don't you think? They even have a similar function. Those are spiracles and they are part of the breathing system. So now we got through the first part of the beetle body, the abdomen. The beetle body is divided into three parts, abdomen, thorax and head. Let's look at the head now, as it's very clearly defined, no matter how we look at it. Besides taking in food, the head serves many of the primary sensory functions. It bears a pair of eyes for seeing, antennae for smelling, tasting and touching, maxillary palps for touch and taste, and mandibles or jaws mainly for gripping, biting and crushing food or defending the beetle from predators. To show you the eyes better, I popped this beetle under the microscope where you can clearly see that the eyes are compound, which means they have many little units, called omatidia, all compound into one eye. In this particular beetle, the eye is sort of kidney-shaped, it has this indentation around the antenna. Some beetle species have the indentation so deep that it looks like the eye is divided into two sections. Moving on to the antennae. The antennae come in different forms and they're very useful in identification. Learning the types of antennae is sort of like learning leaf shapes. It's helpful to be able to recognize the different forms. Antennae are generally composed of 11 segments. Let's count them in our specimen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. See, there are exceptions to this rule, that's why I said in general and not always. In Prionus, males have chunky antennae, whereas female antennae are more slender. Getting to the mandibles, these are basically jaws used to grip and process food. They move side to side as opposed to up and down like our jaws. However, in some species the mandibles might be modified and used for different purposes. I once found this stag beetle that has huge mandibles. They use them to fight other males during courtship. So moving on to the last part of the beetle body, the thorax. To see the thorax properly we have to look ventrally again. It is the part between the head and the abdomen. This is where all three pairs of legs as well as the wings are attached and where the beetle's locomotive power comes from. The thorax is divided into three sections, the prothorax, which is usually a separate, movable piece and clearly visible. It bears the first pair of legs. And when we look dorsally, it is defined by this big section here, which we call the pronotum. The pronotum in this prionus has these sharp spines on each side. Unfortunately in this specimen, the pin goes right through the pronotum which is not the standard way beetles should be prepared. The pin should be positioned between the second and the third pair of legs. If you're interested in insect specimen preparation, let me know in the comments below and I can make a separate video on that topic. The other two thoracic sections are the mesothorax and metathorax and their division is much less obvious with the mesothorax being the smallest segment of all three. The mesothorax and metathorax each carry a pair of legs. Each leg consists of a coxa, a tiny trochanter, a femur, that's the thick section that looks like a beetle has a thigh, a long tibia, and a tarsus, which has a variable number of segments, tarsal segments. 
You can see in this species that the tarsal segments look different from each other. At the tip of the last segment there are claws. The claws are quite grippy and it might hurt you if you get them caught in your skin, like what happened to me with this 10 line June beetle that just wouldn't let go. And that's all the basics of beetle morphology. What do you think? Have you learned anything new? If you know anybody who might find this video helpful, please share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.